Well, praise God. It's good having you out here today. I, I'm excited about the Word this morning. Amen. How many people are excited about the Word? Amen. Praise God. I want to talk to you about, um, continue on the same line that we talked about last week on rewards, that God has rewards for the faithful Christians. And uh, when we get to heaven, not only does He have rewards when we get to heaven, but He has rewards down here too as we serve Him. And uh, we need to be excited about serving God. Amen. Uh, in, uh, in a scripture last week, I talked about that Paul, uh, what, you know, he, he pressed towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so he pressed towards the mark for a prize. And uh, we need to be pressing in to the things of God. Uh, we need to be pressing in and believing God for all that God has for each one of us. Do you believe that today? And so... Um, in my studies, I found out there's, you know, things that God's going to give us at the judgment seat of Christ. We talked about that last week, that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And God will look at, you know, what we did here in, on the earth in serving Him. And um, God expects us to serve Him. Amen. Uh, you know, it's more than just us, you know, saying a prayer and asking Jesus into our heart and then going about our own business and doing our own thing. God wants us serving Him, and uh, that's the key. You know, Jesus needs to be Lord, and uh, like Jesus said in one of the passages, He says, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I ask you to do? So we need, you know, if we're going to call Jesus Lord, we need to obey His Word. Isn't that right? And so um, in my studies, um, there's actually five crowns that, we, that we're going to look at, and I'm not too sure how far we're going to get to the crowns today, but we'll, we'll, we'll move as far as we can. And so one of the crowns is the crown of righteousness. And this is found in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 8. And if you have your Bibles, you can open there to 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. And um, it's so good. And I'm just going to back up to 7 because I think that the, these, this might be a qualifier to, be, to receiving the crown. And this is the Apostle Paul, and it's at the end of the Apostle Paul's journey in life, and he's about ready uh, to give his life to the Lord and to be executed, uh, or to be uh, so for the gospel. And, but uh, he's writing to um, Timothy, his son in the faith, and um, he says here in verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Amen. Amen. And finally, he says, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise God. So we see here that um, we have to fight a good fight of faith. You know, the enemy is after each one of our faith. He's... He's trying to destroy our faith in Christ. So the enemy is always attacking our faith. The only way we can please God is by faith. The only way we can live this Christian walk is by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Um, we live by faith. And so the enemy is after our faith. He wants us to cast away our confidence in God. And so we don't need the enemy getting us to, to look at wrong things or focusing on the wrong things, we need, we need to be focusing on the right things, all the good things in God. Do you believe that? And so here, uh, Paul is saying, I fight the good fight. And, you know, when you think of a fight, is it, you know, you don't really think of a fight being good unless you win. <laughs> so, so when he says, I fight the good fight, he's saying that when you fight the good fight, there's another scripture in, in, in the Bible, it talks about fighting the good fight of faith. We don't fight the devil. because it, We don't fight him because he's already been fought by Jesus. Jesus defeated the devil 2,000 years on the cross. So really, uh, the devil is a defeated foe. So really, you're not fighting the devil today. He's already defeated. You're just enforcing his defeat by you standing on the word of God. So all we have to do is stand on the word... And believe God's word. And, and the Bible is very clear. The Bible says submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And the devil has to flee. That word flee is an interesting word. If you break it down. 
uh, and define it, it means to run in terror. So the devil has to run in terror from you when you're submitted to God and you have to actively be resisting the devil and his onslaughts. Do you believe that? And so Paul was saying that he fought the good fight of faith. And it's interesting, he said, I have finished the race. And so, so he's, you know, we have to look at this, that, that God, that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And Jesus is going to help us finish our race or our course in him. Do you believe that today? So Jesus is in us, the hope of glory. And so he's going to help us, praise God, to finish our race. And then, then again, the Apostle Paul talks about keeping the faith. There's many people, well, I don't know many, but there's some people that are casting away their confidence in God. They're, they're backing off of church. They're not going to church anymore. They're not serving God like they used to. And, so, and, and they're allowing the, the persecutions. They're allowing things to discourage them from serving God. And we can't allow those things to discourage us. There's going to be a lot of things that the enemy is going to try to throw at us to discourage us. Amen. And we know that. And, we, and if you study the parable of the sower, you know there's going to be things that are going to try to creep in. They're either going to try to discourage us or draw us away from the things of God. Amen. And we need to be very careful because the enemy's trying to draw us away and really put the Christian to sleep. And so we have to be careful that we don't, you know, allow our faith to cool down in Christ, that we need to stay sharp in Christ, that we need to stay Focus on him. And so uh, let's look at 2 Timothy 2. Oh, this is a second. Let me talk about the second part of, of the crown. Uh, first part, uh, uh, well, well it, it is the first part of the crown is, is standing in righteousness. It's, it's the crown of righteousness. So this will be the first part. And so the first part of the crown is that God wants us uh, pursuing righteousness. We are righteous by the blood of Jesus. We are put in a righteous position because of the blood of Jesus. We're not saved by works, but we're, we're saved by believing in Jesus. And Jesus was, was made sin, the Bible says, so that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus became sin on the cross. In other words, Jesus took on our sinful nature so we could take on his righteous nature. Amen. So we do uh, in positional uh, relationship with Christ, with God, we are in right standing with God because of the blood. There's nothing good that you can do to, keep, to make yourself in right standing with God in your own ability. Isn't that right? So there's nothing we can do. We can't brag. We, when we get to heaven, we can't brag about how good we were to obtain God's righteousness. No, we need to be bragging about Jesus and how good he is. Amen. And us believing on him. So, so we have positional righteousness by the blood of Jesus and believing in Christ. It's the, you know, it's the great exchange. Jesus exchanged you know, our sins for his righteousness. And so that's wonderful. And I'm so thankful that my name's written in the Lamb's book of life and that I have a home in heaven because of the blood, because of, because of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But also... Um, in, in the crown of righteousness, uh, I believe that we should be pursuing righteousness. As in, you know, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness or in his way of doing things. So this is what I'm talking about here is that when we find truth in the word of God, we need to obey the truth. If the Bible says, you know, in the word of God, do not, you know, commit adultery and do not steal, do not do these things. We need to obey God's word. Amen. Amen. Whenever the light of God's word is shown in our life, we need to obey that. And when we do that, we'll walk in greater light and revelation of Jesus Christ. The less we obey, obey God's word, the more darkness is going to creep into us. And then we're not going to see like we need to see the things that Christ wants us to see, the things that God wants us to see. In other words, the enemy is trying to blind some of us. He's trying to blind us from seeing the goodness and the mercy and the love of God by keeping us, you know, maybe set into some areas that are wrong or trying to keep us, you know, get us into a place where we're doing things that aren't right. So we need to pursue righteousness. Look at 2 Timothy 2. Uh, verses 20 through 22, it says here, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold 
and silver, but also wood and clay. Some of honor and, and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So we see here, he's talking here, in a house there could be uh, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. So there could be people, and I, and I believe this is talking about, you know, the house of God, that there could be people in the church, some that are, um, that are serving God with a pure heart, pure motives, uh, doing the right things to the best of their ability, and then there's others that are that may be just in the church, but they're but they're living for themselves. They may be Christians, but they're but they're living sort of a half backslidden life. They're kind of doing their they're basically doing their own thing, and 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 they're you know they're yielding to temptations without really repenting, and and they're allowing and they're making excuses for their sins. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? But even if you're in that camp, you can get out of that camp. Because it says right here that, that if anyone cleanses himself, cleanses himself. In other words, the Bible says we must judge ourselves so we won't be judged. We need to be constantly looking at our own heart motives and what we do. We have to keep looking at our actions, why we're doing things. Amen. And so we have to consider, we have to, we have to you know, the, the Bible says we have to, Continue to, to look at ourselves to see if we be in the faith. Are we actually in the faith? Are we actually being Christians? Are we actually doing what God wants us to do? And so, so I, I think that, you know, it's good news today that we don't have to be a vessel of dishonor, but we can be a vessel of honor. Amen. All it takes is repenting, turning from those things that displease the Lord. You know, sin displeases the Lord. Amen? Because it separates us and destroys us. Separates us from, from really what God wants to do in our life. When we sin, it opens the door for the devil to come in and to work and to destroy our lives. The devil, is, his whole goal is to destroy us, uh, uh, to shorten our lives, to take, off, take us out of planet Earth. Amen? To keep us from being an effective witness. So we're talking about the crown of righteousness, which I believe is, is twofold here. It's, it's walking upright before God. But let's look at this scripture again. It says, finally, there is laid up. This, uh, this is 2 Timothy 4, 8. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who love his appearing. And so the second part of this is that do we... Love his appearing. In other words, are we actively looking for Jesus to come back? Are we, are we thinking about Jesus? Is, are we, you know, thinking about him on a daily basis? And are we thinking about heavenly things? Are we, are we focused on those things? You know, in Acts 1, uh, verses 9 through 11, this was, you know, after Jesus spoke to his disciples, and, he, and this is the ascension of Jesus going to heaven, uh, after he was raised from the dead and he, he was here for 40 days and he was teaching his disciples and he was doing a lot of things. But, but here in Acts 1, 9 through 11, it says, Now when he had spoken these things, talking about Jesus, why they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And why they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you look, stand, why do you look, uh, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Amen. Right here, this is talking about that Jesus is going to be coming back. Amen. That Jesus is not leaving us down here. That he's coming back for a church. The Bible talks about this. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Full of love and faith. You know, without spot or wrinkle means that a church that's, that's actively engaged in their faith, that's actively serving God with a pure heart, that's, that's active. There's, there's Christians that are living 
uh, their lives, but some, but some Christians don't have what I call living faith. Their faith is in dormant. They're not activating their faith. They're not witnessing like they need to. They're not talking about Christ. They're not seeking God like they need to. And so their, their, their faith is, um, is dormant. And I don't want a dormant faith. I want a living faith. I want, I, want to be as, I want to be excited today as I was the day that I got saved. I want to keep stoking the fire in my life. I don't know about you, but I want to stay fired up for God. Look at your neighbor and say, get fired up for God. Amen. And so we're talking here uh, about Jesus coming back and, and, and looking for his return. And, you know, uh, you, know we, we, you can, if you're, if, you've, if you're looking at the news and you're looking at what's going on as a Christian and, and you're opening your eyes, you can see there's a lot of evil in this world. And, and, and it's just so ama- it amazes me how, you know, uh, what, what people are putting and talking about today. Uh, um, and, and it's all evil. The Bible says that people will be calling in the end days good evil and evil good. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, you know, now, you know, you probably, you know, heard, you know, uh, uh, trans uh, uh, tr- uh, cross dressers and 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 and, you know, the uh, gay lifestyle and all this. And it's all, you know, it's supposed to be all equal rights and and all that. You know, but, you know, the Bible has something to say about that. And so if we don't stand on what the Word of God says about morality, amen, and what the Bible talks about it, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. And just because the government says it's okay for you to walk a certain lifestyle, just because the government says that, that marriage, it's okay between now, it can be between a man and a man and a woman and a woman, doesn't mean it's right. And doesn't make it right. Amen. And, you know, and, it's, and, and marriage, you know, and I don't want to go off on this, but marriage is a God-ordained institution. Yes, it and so it's between a man and a woman, and it was designed in the Bible. Amen. Amen. It comes from the Bible. So, you know, I'm not against you calling, you know, and this is a sideline, and I need to get back to my message. You can call it, a, you know, a, 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 a union between a man and a man. But don't call it marriage. Call it something else. Still, they can have rights if they want rights to visit and all that if they're in a the hospital. But call it something else, but don't call it a marriage. Because it's not a marriage. Amen. I know I might be stepping on some toes this morning, but the, Bi- Bi- the Bible's true. Amen. See, as Christians, we need to stand up for what's right because it, it's, you know, it's, it's Jesus He's the key. He's, he's, gonna, he's our, our righteousness. But, you know, people sin if they don't turn to Jesus and they go into a lifestyle. Now, you could, it could be, you could be a, a heterosexual. You, you could just be a whoremonger. You're still in the same classification. So I'm not, we're not against the gays. We're not, but, but, it, but we're for the Bible. Amen. Amen. So even if you're a heterosexual, you know, that you're, in this, you're in that same camp. And a whoremonger. So you're in the same camp. Amen. In other words, sin is sin. It's not my little problem. You know, uh, you know, adultery is adultery. It's not an affair, which makes it sound so much better. But anyway, I'm having an affair, you know, instead of adultery relationship. Amen. And so we have to look at that. And the, and the world is crazy. It's backwards. And everything seems to be backwards, and, 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 and there seems to be more rights for the criminals yes. <laughs> than, than for the people that are trying to live upright lives. Oh are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so we're, we're, living, we're living in the end times. We are in the end times, believe it or not. And so we are living in, in the end times, and you can see that. You know, I, I believe, you know, there's, you know, the Bible talks about the second coming of Christ. And it talks about that Jesus is coming back. But also, it, uh, you know, there's also, I believe, is a rapture before the second coming. And that's the rapture of the church. Amen. And before that, I believe that before the rapture comes, I believe there's going to be a, a revival that God's going to sweep in a lot of people. So revival's coming. <laughs> Amen. Revival's coming. We need to get excited about that. Revival's coming to Virginia Beach. Revival's coming to your household. Amen. 
But then we need to look at this, that I believe that there's a rapture before the actual second coming, before Jesus actually plants his feet down on the earth. And let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8, because we have to look at this. And, uh, the, and there's a lot of opinions per, uh, pertaining to this. And, you know, one camp believes that we're going to go through the seven year tribulation. You may not even understand what that means. But, uh, but uh, there's, the Bible calls it a seven year tribulation. And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, whatever you believe in this, you still need to be ready. Amen. Okay? But, but I stand sort of on a, a more on one, you know, I believe in a rapture before the tribulation. And I'll explain that through some of these scriptures. And uh, it says here uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 8. Um, it says, now, brethren, concerning uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God who, uh, or that is worshipped. So the, the son of perdition, it's talking about the Antichrist here. So that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I hold these things? And what was happening is that some people were trying to upset the faith of some people, saying that Jesus already returned. And so he's trying to correct this and, and try to reveal this to, to, his, to the people uh, of the church, that Jesus hadn't returned yet. And he says, and now what, now it says here, uh, um, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is, restrain, what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For, my, for the mystery of the lawless is already at work only. He who now restrains will do until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, now it's gonna, you, you're going to need some explana explanation here. Now, when we're talking here, he's talking about here, when we look at this, he says, For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Um, you know, uh, it says the lawless one will not be revealed until, until uh, the restrainer is taken out of the way. Who's the restrainer? It actually has a capital H here. It could be talking about God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. And I believe it's talking about the Holy Spirit working through the church. And so here it's saying that the Antichrist will not be revealed until the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, is taking out of the picture. In other words, the Holy Spirit abides in the church. And I believe as the church um, is praying and witnessing, and, and the church is called the salt of the earth, which means that the church is preserving, the, the, the believer is preserving the earth. And so until the... Christians are taken out of the way, God will not reveal the Antichrist. That's what I believe this is saying here, is that, that the Antichrist will, be not, will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so, so the Holy Spirit is in each believer. And so, uh, and so the Holy Spirit, so if, if the church is raptured, uh, out of the way, then that then nothing will stop the Antichrist from coming in and taking over. Because you know prayer is powerful. Now I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit's going to be leaving the earth, because I believe the Holy Spirit will still be down here to draw people down here on earth during the tribulation. But uh, the Holy Spirit that's residing in the church, the church I believe is keeping all the, the uh, evil to really come in full uh, work uh, in the end days. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that your prayers are making a difference? Yes. Amen. I believe that. And so we must believe that. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. Let's look at that. It says here, and this is another uh, scripture that I, I believe pertaining to the rapture. And um, 
you know, it says here that uh, if you found, just say amen. It says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with a trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive will, will remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So here, um, you know, some theologians, and I believe it this way as well, that this isn't the second coming because Jesus is catching people up in the air. He hasn't put his foot down on the earth. And that it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a mystery and it's going to be sort of a secret to the world because the world doesn't know what's going on. But the church should know what's going on. Amen. And, uh, and so I believe this, that, 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 that God is going to uh, have the church raptured before the seven-year tribulation. And the first three and a half years is supposed to be the wrath of Christ. And the second three and a half years is the wrath of God. And so it's going to get bad in the seven-year tribulation. It's going to get really, really bad. And, and uh, I don't know about you, but I believe that Jesus doesn't want the church going through that. Amen. Amen. And so, and so we have to look at that, you know, the, there's other scriptures talking about that, you know, that if we're worthy, that we will, uh, we'll, we will not be in, you know, the tribulation, that we will not be in the tribulation. So there's, there's scriptures that pertain to that, you know, uh, there's Old Testament scriptures and the Old Testament is type and shadows of, of the New Testament. It, it, it reveals Christ, it reveals the salvation plan when you read the Old Testament, um, you know, uh, uh, and so there's, there's glimpses of, of reality, of the truth of what God is doing today from the Old Testament. Christ is revealed in the Old Testament to us. And, and, and so um, there's a, a story about, about Lot and Abraham, Abraham's uh, nephew Lot, that was uh, in, in the city of uh, Sodom. And, uh, and so what happened was that Abraham prayed... Uh, to uh, God or, or spoke to the Lord about, about the city and talked about, you probably remember about, you know, if there would be 40 righteous, then down to 30. If there would be 10 righteous, would you spare the city? But this is really interesting when you study this out, and I don't have the scripture at, uh, on hand, but you can look, you can check it out um, and do a study for yourself. But it said that the angel, when he came, he actually came to Lot's house and really he came to Lot's house and, and they came to check out what was going on in the city. And the angel said to Lot that they, could, that they could not destroy the city until Lot was out of that city. So, you know, he was, a righteous, he was a righteous person. So that kind of tells me even though God's judgment was there to destroy the city, Lot had to be out of that city and the angel could not do anything. So that sort of tells me, uh, now you can see saying, well, that's stretching it, but that sort of tells me that God won't do anything as in, uh, allow the Antichrist to come in until the church is out. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? That, that kind of reveals to me that, you know, and I know that it, it's debatable and uh, you may lean on, you know, that we're, that we're supposed to go through the tribulation. But the more I study it, you know, even the crown of righteousness, think about this. In the crown of righteousness that it, it says here, and you want to back up to how we receive the crown of righteousness, is that uh, we should, uh, of course, walk a righteous life, but we should love his appearing. You know, everybody's going to love his appearing if you're in the tribulation. <laughs> and everybody, in other words, if everybody's head's being cut off, Lord, come quickly. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That should be a no-brainer. Everybody should get that crown. Yeah. But if, if the Bible is true, and what I believe it talks about is that, that when Jesus comes back, it's going to be like the days of Noah, the Bible says. Jesus actually says it in Matthew 24. He says, gonna be like, and people are going to be uh, giving in marriage, doing business. It's going to be like everything's happening like regular, like normal. And so, and so if that's the truth, and, and, and that tells me then all, you know, hell's not breaking loose yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? In other words, that, that if, if things are going to be happening normal as they always do, did, then, G, then that's the way Jesus is going to be coming back when it doesn't seem like he's going to come back. Amen. He's going to come back. The Bible actually says he's going to come back like a thief in the night. Yes. And so we really need to be, you know, expected. That's what's called the, 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 the blessed hope. 
is that, you know, we should not, you know, uh, a lot of times I think we get into, you know, this, the, you know, eschatology, which is the study of end times. And we start looking more, and if we, if we lean more, I, I believe sometimes if we lean more on the idea that we're going through the tribulation and Jesus is coming at the end, then we lean more towards looking for, you know, the Antichrist. In other words, we're looking for when is the Antichrist is going to appear. So we, we start looking at the end time events, but the Bible never tells us to look for the Antichrist. The Bible tells us to look for Jesus. Isn't that right? We should be looking for the return of Jesus, not be looking for the Antichrist appearing. Isn't that right? And so, and so that's what we need to be looking at. And that's, and that's what, what we call is, is the, the blessed hope that, that we're believing that Jesus could return any moment. And if we're believing that, that should keep us walking in purity before God. Because if we're believing that Jesus could return tonight then we should be on our P's and Q's. Amen. If we're waiting and saying, well, the, the temple hasn't been built in, in Israel yet, so, you know, the Antichrist can't show up yet. And if we're waiting for some natural things to happen, you know, for the Antichrist to show up, if we're waiting for that, then I, I, my, my take on it is that it could make us lazy as Christians. Or we may not even really need to really serve God until all this starts happening, then we can start serving God. That's my take on it. Okay, that's my side on it. And so, and so to me, I have more faith and belief that, that Christ is going to, you know, the, the, the rapture is going to be before the second coming. Amen? Now, you can study it out for yourself because, you know, the, the church can be split on this and, and some of the church, and there's nothing wrong if you believe that, and that makes your faith great, uh, that you're going through the tribulation, then stand on that belief. I'm not telling you to not stand on that belief. But my faith is stronger believing in a rapture. For me, personally, that my faith, I stand stronger on that. But if you stand strong in going through that, and of course, you know, people believe that if we go through the tribulation, we got to give that side that God will protect us as we go through the tribulation, like the ten plagues of Egypt, and the Egyptians were protected through it. That's, you know, that God will protect you through that. And so, and, and that's what some people believe that we're going through tribulation. Either way, we need to be ready. Either way, we need to be ready. Whatever, whatever you believe, and some people believe in the mid-tribulation that Jesus is coming back in the middle. Whatever you believe, you need to be ready. You need to be ready for the return of Christ. And so, so for us to get the crown of, of righteousness... We need to be walking upright before the Lord. Amen. Obeying his statutes and his decrees, uh, doing what he wants us to do. And, you know, I'm excited because, you know, Jesus could be coming back any moment. And we need to be talking about that, that Jesus can, I believe, he could show up any time. That it doesn't have to, we don't have to wait to a certain event to happen in Israel or for the appearing of the Antichrist to show up. I believe that he could come back any moment. Amen. Amen. And so that should keep us in a place where uh, we're staying, you know, fired up for God. Amen. And so, and so that's my take on it. <laughs> Glory to God. And, uh, and so, you know, the second crown, I, I may try to hit on that, is called the incorrupt, incorruptible crown. It, this is the victor's crown for those who... Uh, discipline their bodies and bring their bodies into subjection and under self-control. And so, you know, we uh, have, uh, you know, God has given us uh, authority over our bodies. Amen. And so let's look at 1 Corinthians 9, 25 through 27. And it says here, amen. Uh, it says, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we for an imperishable ground, therefore I run, thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So really, um, it's talking about here that there is a, a crown, which could also be called the victor's crown. And um, this is that where we are disciplining ourselves 
and that we're walking with God and that we're not allowing, you know, our, our carnal uh, nature to control us and that we're allowing God to control us by the Holy Spirit. You know, um, it's this, is that if, if whatever we're doing, even if it looks good, what we're doing, even if it looks good, if it's born out of the flesh, it won't accomplish anything in eternity. So whatever we do out of the flesh will not accomplish too much. It has to be out of the Spirit. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? If, if, it's, if, if even what we do is good that's accomplished out of the flesh, it will turn into pride. They'll, it will give man glory. Whatever is done out of the flesh gives man glory. But whatever is done out of the Spirit gives God, gives God glory. Whatever is produced out of the spirit realm or out of faith should always give praise and glory to God. That's why when we do anything, we, we should do it out of the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It should be done by the leading of the Holy Spirit, not done out of the flesh. Is this helping anybody today? Because you can do a lot of things out of the flesh. You, know, you can even, you know, I've heard of stories of people trying, you know, you can even look at a calling. You know, like a, like a fivefold calling, like an evangelist or a pastor. And you can say, I like that type of calling. But if you're not called to do that and you try to do that calling, you're stepping out of place. Amen. And you're doing it in the flesh instead of by the leading of the Spirit. And even if you do some good and get some people saved, and even if you're able to build a church, you will not re re receive a reward if that's not your place. That doesn't sound right, does it? But, but, but God... He has a place for each one of us. And what we do cannot be out of our flesh. It has to be out of the spirit. Amen. 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 That's the reason why some of us are trying to make a lot of things happen. But, we're, but it's, it's, it's coming out of our carnal nature instead of the spirit realm. And so if we're, if we're trying to make it happen out of our carnality or out of the flesh, it won't accomplish much. The Bible says it this way, unless the Lord builds the house. Unless the Lord builds a house, they that labor to build it. Notice it says they built it. They that labor to build it, build it in vain. So even though you may be building a spiritual house, if it's being built from the flesh, that labor is in vain. It has to be built out of the Spirit of God. Is this helping anybody today? So, so we have to be governed by our spirit. We have to be led by the spirit. So when, when he's talking about here, you know, receiving, you know, the victor's crown, he's talking about not allowing the flesh to dictate to us what we're going to do. You know, the flesh will say a lot, it will tell you to do a lot of things or tell you not to do a lot of things. But it's God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, that will reveal to us what we need to do and what we need not to do. And that will help us to build that, 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 you know, godly house, if I may, you know, in, in the Lord. And so as we, as we do that, we may receive the, the, the victor's crown, amen, the, the incorruptible crown, glory to God. And so, and so I believe that these crowns are special crowns given for people that are, are going above and beyond the measure, you know, of, of their, their duties in Christ. And I don't know about you, but I, I want some of these crowns. Amen? Yes. I want to have a crown where, where there, it's imperishable. And, and, you know, we should be looking for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We should be running our race, believing that we're going to hear God say, uh, you know, blessed are you, you know, uh, come into the joy of the Lord, you know, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And, you know, that's the way I want to be living my life every day. But, you know, when I put my head on the pillow, I want to just have that, that satisfaction on the inside that the Lord is saying, well done, you did, well, you did good today. You submitted yourself to me. You resisted the devil. The temptation that the enemy was trying to get you to go in that direction, you did not go in that direction. And you know what? You have submitted yourself. And that's, that's one more notch closer to the crown of victory. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Because I'm going to say this. We're all dealing with weaknesses. And, you know, and the enemy is constantly working on us to back up, back off, to, to not be as diligent as we need to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Get a little lax in our walk. 
And I don't know about you. You know, man. Whoo, man. You know, there's um, in uh, Matthew 24, it, it talks about, maybe in 25, Matthew 25. It talks about, it, Jesus talks about the parable, uh, and I'm closing here, of the uh, ten virgins. And he talks about, you know, in the parable of the ten virgins, you know, five, you know, kept their oil filled, yes. and five did not fill their oil. Yeah. And he talks about the ten virgins. I, I, I see that as being like church, ten church members. Yeah. And I see that as the church, and some people are staying fired up. They're reading the word. They're staying in the presence of God. They're keeping their oil filled. And the Bible said that the other five were, were, were laxed in their walk with God. And it said that the day that came, that Jesus came, and I believe that's talking about the rapture, that, 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 that uh, the, the five that had their oil filled, they were ready to be received you know, into glory, but the other five weren't ready. And that they were trying to scramble to get ready. And, and the Bible said that they didn't make it in. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? The Bible said the five virgins that were not ready, that did not get, keep their oil filled, did not make it in. And, you know, listen, if you can't live for Christ why it's relatively easy down here, then, then if we do go through the tribulation, you're not going to live for Christ when they start putting pressure on you if you're going to eat or buy and sell. Amen. Hallelujah. If it starts getting bad, if you're not living for Christ now when it's not bad, you're sure certainly not going to live for Christ when it starts getting bad. If you can't live for Christ when it's easy... <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying today? Because some, some will even say, well... If they, and some may believe that, and they may go, well, Jesus is not coming back until the Antichrist is set up. And so the Antichrist is not anywhere close, so I don't have to do anything. Well, if you're not doing anything now, when, when all the pressure comes on you, you're going to bow to the pressure and get the mark. And see, when the Bible says that if you get the mark, then that's it. The mark of the beast, you know, if, the, the mark... Talk, you know, the Bible talks about the mark, and I know there's a lot further explaining if you don't understand what I'm saying today. But, you know, if you can't start serving God now, you're going to fall under the pressure, and you're going to take the mark, and you're going to say, well, it's the grace of God, and, the, the, and you're going to have preachers preaching, oh, the grace of God will cover the mark. The grace of God will cover the mark. And, and, you're gonna, and we're going to buy into the grace of God covering the mark. But the Bible doesn't say that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says you take the mark that do, do not pass go, go directly to hell. I mean jail, I mean monopoly. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you, you, you get the mark. You're, you're, are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? There's no repentance over that. There's no turning back. Amen. So, you know, whether what camp you're in, that we're going to be raptured now, I believe that. But if we're going through, you better start living for God now. You start, better start living for Christ now. Amen? Get ready now. Amen? Don't say, oh yeah. Because the Bible says this, you start backing off the things of God, and pretty soon you're not believing, you're not walking with the Lord, that, you know, even in Romans it talks about that God will send you a delusion. And that you won't even want to believe anymore. Now that's to the unbeliever. But the Bible also says that if you are in, in, in rebelling against God, it is rebellion when you're sinning actively against God and not repenting. You're in, total, you're in rebellion against God. And if you're in rebellion against God, the Bible says perhaps God will grant you the grace of repentance. One scripture talks about that. What do you mean? You mean you, my, my, I might have to have grace? For repentance? Yeah, God may not grant you the grace of repentance if you keep saying no to Him. If you keep saying no to Him over and over again, then, you know, then you know, there's going to be a, there's got, there's a point where God's going to leave you to your idols. He, he will, there is a point. There is a place. I don't know where that point is. But there is a place where God will say, okay, if you don't want me and you want that, then I'm going to stop drawing you by my Spirit. And I don't know about you, but the worst thing in the world is to have comfort in your sin. The worst thing in the world is for you to be comfortable sinning and not have any kind of conviction in your heart. That is the worst place to be as a Christian, to have no Holy Ghost conviction and you're steeped in sin. 
That's the worst place to be. Because if you don't, if you don't have any kind of anxiety about your sin, you don't have any, any kind of fear or remorse about the sin that you might be doing as a Christian, then you're in a bad place with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? God, you're in a very bad place. And, you, and, 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 and the fear of God is a gift. Can I say that again? The fear of God, having a reverential fear of God, knowing that God is God and we're not, is a gift. It's a gift to have a reverential fear of the judgment of God. And see, the way, because the, the reason why the world is going the way it's going, the, the person without God, is because they don't fear God. They don't believe that God has created a hell and that they don't believe that they need to receive Jesus as the punishment for their sin. And they don't even believe in a hell. And, and most people will believe in a heaven, hopefully, but they don't believe in hell. They don't believe that God is going to judge. But God is a just judge. And we need to be aware of that. That's the reason why we need to be persuading people to come to Jesus. There is a cause. There is a reason for us to be here. And that's the reason why we need to be alerting people and letting our Christian brothers that are not walking with Christ get back in. Let, let, our, you know, let the people that don't know Christ get in to the safety ark of God. Because the rain is coming. The reign of is coming, not just the reign of God's glory, but the reign of God's wrath is coming down on this earth. And it's coming. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be ready for the return of Christ. I'm going to keep myself fired up for the things of Christ. I'm going to press through. It's a press. It's a press. It's a press to press through the things, to get to God, to walk in God. There's a press. Yes, maybe some of you might need a fast. Oh, man, did I go there? Maybe some of you might need to lay down some carnal things. Did I go there? Maybe we might need to do that so we can pick up some higher things in Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be the person that Jesus has come back. Because the Bible says, well, when Jesus comes back, will he find faith? Another translation says, will he find faithfulness? So when Jesus comes back, will he find people in faith? Serving him, obeying him. Walking the walk, talking the talk, doing what he's calling us to do. Really fine. He's going to find me doing that, and he's going to find you doing that. Because this church is being raised up to be a great and mighty church for God. Each one of you, Jesus is coming back, and I'm telling you, the wrinkles and the spots are being removed off of each one of us in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? The washing of the water of the word is washing us and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Do you believe that today? Yes. Praise God. If you do, shout glory right now. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. glory. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your mercy, for your goodness, and for your love today. Thank you, Father God, that you're preparing us for good things. Thank you, Father God, that, that uh, you have great things in store for each one. Perhaps you're here today. Maybe there's areas in your life that you need to get right. Well, today's the day to do it. Amen. The Bible says that sin will harden our hearts. And the harder our hearts become, the harder it will be for us to hear from the Spirit of God. And so we really need to break up that foul ground. And to do that is by repentance. If that's you today. You know you need to repent of some things. You need to just get your heart right. Or maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and you need to get your heart right. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Where you at? Praise God. Amen. I see those hands. Glory to God. Praise God. I want you to pray this prayer after me and, and, and say it like you mean it. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I, 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 um, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge to you that there's areas in my life that need to be changed, and only you can help me change them. Jesus, I repent of those things, and I'm turning away from those things that displease you, and I'm turning to you, and I'm making you not only Savior, but Lord of my life in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.